Hi, this is Mariah Go from The Hollywood Reporter, and I'm in studio today with Carrie Mulligan. Hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm good. I'm good, and uh, we're here to talk about wildlife. This movie is getting a lot of attention, and a lot of it is because of our first-time director, Paul Dano. Yes. Uh, what was it like? Did you know Paul before? Had you worked with him before? So we haven't ever worked together, but Paul, Zoe, and I, and Jake, actually, we'd all known each other for about 10 years. So Zoe ah. and I did a production of The Seagull together on Broadway, mm -hmm. and so Zoe and I shared a dressing room, became friends, and then I met Paul through Zoe, and then I think maybe the same year I did a two-second role in Brothers that Jake was in, so I met Jake there. So we've all kind of been friends since then. Right, and Jake is the producer of the mm -hmm. movie, Paul, writer, director, Zoe, writer. And producer, yeah. So it's a, a very close-knit cast. Yeah, and, the, and aside from Jake, there's really only um, Warren Miller, played by Bill Camp, mm -hmm. and our son, played by Ed Oxenbold. So it's a mm -hmm. nice little tight-knit thing. Yeah, and what was it like filming together, uh, uh, having like a tight-knit like that? You know, I think initially I was kind of intimidated by acting in front of Paul because I've mm -hmm. always thought he's like this incredible actor and um, and so honest and uh, and so I think I was a little bit sort of frightened that, and, I, and I felt this responsibility that he and Zoe had entrusted me with this part and mm. um, and so it was kind of high stakes for me and then kind of weirdly not with Jake. I think we'd kind of talked about working together so much and we'd even like read a few plays together and so we'd uh, that kind of felt easy and comfortable but the sort of the first day of filming in front of Paul, I don't know, kind of freaked me out even though he did everything to sort of make me feel comfortable. But then when we were in it, it was kind of magical because we were, you know, then that sort of, all of the fear stuff went away and then it just became like going to work with your mates every day and making mm. something that we all really loved. Does filming seem different with a first-time director? Do you notice a difference? Uh, not with Paul. No. I think it can He do. was born ready, wasn't he? <laughs> For everything. Yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah, he's kind of, you just, he's, you can't shake him really, like, mm -hmm. you know, and like, this is 28 day shoot, you know, uh, period film, tiny budget, you know, the, the everything was up against him, mm -hmm. and... And he just, you just couldn't see him panicking. There was just no, he was just the model of calm and assured. And he had thought out the film in such detail. And he and Diego had worked together so closely. Mm -hmm. So it felt like he just came in every day ready to work. And so, you know, now being a close friend and everything in retrospect, I, can, I know all the stories of what was going on and, the, you know, the kind of real struggles of indie filmmaking. But we never saw any of that. It was just calm right. and, like, creative and fun. Yeah. And uh, you shot on location in Oklahoma? So we, we did a, a, a week in Montana first, uh -huh. and then we went to Oklahoma. This town that, you know, so much of which looked like we were still in the 60s, so it was great mm. for the production side of things. It was also a town that was sort of unjaded by film, so they were, like, happy uh. to have us and welcoming, and the community <laughs> was nice, and so, you know, they didn't mind if we stopped the traffic for a minute, and stuff like that, you know, where mm -hmm. you can kind of feel like you're an inconvenience. They were just lovely. Um, so it was great, and I think it's so nice to get to go on location somewhere. I think it creates a kind of community in the crew that you don't have if you all go back to your own house, right. like your real life house. Uh, when you and Paul and Zoe started talking about the script, what were your first impressions of Jeanette? I think the first thing that kind of struck me about her was this this kind of nostalgia. You know, I think she's she's having a really kind of freaky, nostalgic moment where everything reminds her that time is passing and that she mm. may ne not necessarily have done the best with what she had. So I think she's sort of woken up in the body of a 34-year-old woman who has a son and a husband but can't quite figure out how she got there. And and she's got this sort of unspoken contract with her husband that as long as he keeps up his side of the bargain, which is like getting a good job and, you know, and if he loses his job, you know, getting another one and keeping a smile on his face, all of these things that are required of him, then she'll keep up hers, which is wearing an apron and being a good mother and a good wife and, you know, that veneer of, like, what it is to be a perfect woman. Um, but when he reneges on his side of the deal, something just breaks where she can't keep up pretending anymore. So I think, and she's being sort of triggered by things that she, that remind her of the past and remind her of all of this opportunity that lay before her before she met him. So I think this week mm. is like, if I'm not a wife and I'm failing as a mother, who am I? And she can't 
figure it out, so she's trying to answer that question. You have this scene, the dinner scene with Joe and Warren. Mm. Um, you display every emotion on the books in that <laughs> scene. What was filming that scene like? Uh, well, first of all, the scene was over two nights, so it was a night shoot, uh -huh. and we shot it over two days. Um, yeah, I mean, that was probably the scene that I was kind of most concerned about, because that's kind of kind of the climax of her whole week, and then the next day she sort of, you know, changes. So, uh, and the thing about that scene is that she's trying so many different strategies the whole way through. She's kind of got this misguided idea that if she brings her son and presents him to Warren Miller that you know, perhaps he'll recognize him as part of the package and and he'll take both of them on. And in the same dinner, she's also trying to sort of disillusion Joe of a lot of things and she's trying to align herself with Warren Miller and that's not really working. So she's kind of constantly shifting and also getting more drunk. Um, so it was kind of a minefield to shoot, but it was... <laughs> It was one of the scenes where Paul just really became, you know, just stepped up in such an amazing way because he he could recognize that I was kind of questioning what I was doing and I was trying to, it was such a difficult thing to calibrate and he came in midway through filming that scene and just said like, just do like the worst take you've ever done. Just do something awful, huh. just completely fuck it up and 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 I'll, uh, uh, and let's just see what happens. And then it, there was sort of, it was just sort of liberating and then I didn't, I wasn't so kind of reflective and I could just sort of, do whatever she's not really thinking at all and right. she's you know so it was yeah it was kind of interesting but also such a joy to try and navigate you know so mm -hmm. tricky to like figure out the corners and figure out where she's going with things and, and what's going through her mind and and how she feels when she sees her son and sees her husband in him and you know is suddenly reminded of the life that she actually does have you know so I think um, there's a lot going on in there but it was it was fun to do the relationship between Jeanette and Joe um, I was trying to find a word to describe it, but I would say that, like you said before, she's uh, presenting a level of honesty to him mm. where she's like, welcome to the real world, kid. Mm. You're, you're growing up. Mm. Is there somebody out there who is that level of like brutally honest that you, you could pull from? Yeah, there's quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I, but I don't know if I was thinking of anyone specific, but what I think, she's got such a small circle. There are so few people in her life. So a huge part of that, of trying to erase former Jeanette, is erasing who Joe thinks of when he thinks of his mother. And and so part of it, I think, is like burning down any idea of who she was. I'm not her. I'm not this perfect mum. I'm not this perfect housewife. And neither is your dad, by the way. This is who we really are. The problem with that is that she doesn't have the answer. So she can't say this is who we really are because she doesn't know. So she kind of gets halfway through that process of just like, forget everything mm -hmm. you knew about us. Um, none of it was true, and now you can get to know the real me, and I'm going to try and figure it out at the same time. So, you know, there's a kind of twisted logic in there, and it's totally misguided, and I don't think she's enjoying herself, but I think it is an effort to be at least honest, and an mm -hmm. effort to be, um, to have integrity. And I think she feels like such a fraud, having kept up this kind of mask for so long. Mm -hmm. Is it hard to uh, have to kind of defend a character it seems like a lot of people are calling the characters, you know, unsympathetic or unlikable. Mm. Mm. Uh, has that been difficult to... No, I mean, I kind of like it, you know. I feel like, you know, I, I think it's... She's just having a really rough week, and people are so hard on women, you know. We're so tough on women, and I think... There's, we have such crazy expectations of what is possible and what people can be capable of. And I think women are capable of extraordinary things. Um, but I do think we're fallible and I think we make mistakes. And I think, you know, I think we're just not used to seeing that reflected on screen because we are brought up with, you know, fairy tale mm. princess stories and stories of mothers, you know, battling through and being saints. But it's just not, we can't all be perfect all the time. So I enjoy portraying someone who's just human but trying and hopefully you still have empathy you know um so I don't feel I feel kind of protective I don't feel defensive I feel like <laughs> let me explain to you why this is a person who's just a real person you know and not um and not someone who's kind of setting out to cause harm the final scene wraps up the evolution of Joe mm. Joe getting to a place where he's become an adult mm. um and he is able to kind of look at his parents with like a true lens. Mm. Jeanette's ending, it feels like there's a bit of humility there. Yeah. Do you feel like that 
she's come full circle. Yeah, I mean, I think it's, you know, when she says to him towards the end, I won't blame you if you hate me, I think she means that. You know, I think mm -hmm. she recognizes that what she's put him through isn't fair and wasn't right and wasn't the right thing to do. Um, so I think when she says that, that's true, that, you know, she's expecting him. And, it, and part of her leaving is recognizing that she, if she can't even figure out who she is, she's not gonna serve him that well as a mother. So, and having put him through everything he's been through, maybe he needs time to heal. So I think, you know, she has created distance and, and boundaries and tried to reinstate boundaries that got kind of skewed in that time. You know, she's getting closer to sort of finding some peace. Um, but she's not quite there yet. So I kind of like that that's left open and you don't mm. know quite, but you know that Joe's going to be all right. You know? you know Joe's going to be all right. You don't know what's going to happen to Jeanette. Yeah. You've said before that you would only take roles that scare you a little mm. bit because if you already know how to do them, mm. it's probably not worth doing. Mm. So what's left to scare you? <laughs> um, <laughs> I don't know. Comedy, probably. Uh, <laughs> I, did that. I, did a, I did a play this year. I did a monologue, um, and it was like 90 minutes, and probably the first like 45 minutes of the play are just pretty much like funny anecdotal, you know, uh, storytelling and and it was terrifying you know yeah. trying the onus the onus on you to make an audience laugh on your own it's like you know sitting in a dinner party and telling a joke and nobody finds it funny is one of the most crushing things <laughs> you know on the planet and so doing that on stage in front of people was just oh it was but it was great I loved it and mm -hmm. you know certainly opened my eyes and gave me an even bigger respect for, for comedy in general um, so I don't know. I know what it isn't. I know what I don't want to do. Um, I don't want to tread over old ground. When I read it, I just called Paul immediately and was like, yes, thank you. I thank you for letting me do this. I want to, to find, read something that makes me feel like that. Mm. When you look at the movie, what's mm. the most stunning visual effect of it? I think, mm. I personally think the movie is very beautiful. Mm. Is there something that kind of haunts you in your head when you see it? I think there's a great shot of Jake on the lawn smoking a cigarette and there's sort of in a funny montage where you see him kind of going downhill a little bit. But probably my favourite part of the whole film, it might not be the visual of it, but the whole, the entire experience of it is the scene at Warren Miller's house where Bill Camp is telling the story of going flying in his aeroplane. And mm. this music starts to play in the background and he's... Uh, and he's just telling this story to Joe and you zero in on his voice and the story that he's telling about like losing grip on his own humanity and it floors me every time <laughs> I see it. Um, that's probably my favorite part of the film. Amazing. Carrie Mulligan, thank you so much for being here. Thank the movie you. is Wildlife.